I, a 48-year-old male, have a son who graduated high school this year. My wife and I started his college fund the minute we found out she was pregnant. Since we made good money in the mid-six figures, his college fund currently has almost $400,000. We have never told our son what to do with his life. We may have guided his decisions as any good parent should, but since he was still young, we let him make his own decisions. We never expected academic excellence or forced him into sports or artistic activities. After graduating high school, he said he didn't want to go to college. We told him he could do whatever he wanted, as long as he was sure. He refused trade schools as well. He also didn't want to work with us in our business. He said he planned to use his college fund to start a business of his own. I said that I would allow it only if he took some business management, accounting and law classes at the nearby community college. I also said that I would pay for these classes out of pocket, not from the fund, and that I would expect a well-made business plan before giving him the money. My wife agrees 100%, but he called us idiots for holding his college fund hostage to make him do what we wanted. We believe we are just doing our best to ensure that his business succeeds. So, am I the idiot for refusing to release my son's college fund to him unless he takes some college classes? You are the idiot. The money was saved for him. And if he has a solid business plan, the money is an investment, just as it would have been for his education. In addition, he also needs to work in the field of the business he's interested in. Taking a few classes is still setting him up for failure. You are the idiot for attempting to over-control your child. That is not your role. You saved for him, so accept that he isn't going to college. Give him his gift with no strings attached and learn how to deal with this in a way that isn't manipulating your children. I'm not surprised if he goes no contact with you over this. I'll probably get downvoted, but I'm not the idiot. You're not holding the money hostage for any selfish reason. You're trying to help him get and stay on a good track in life. You even offered to pay for the classes out of pocket and not from the college fund. You're trying to support him, but you're also trying to stay realistic and make sure that he knows what he's doing so he doesn't make a $400,000 mistake. He probably has this cool business idea of opening a shop for his hobby, but that may not be a sustainable or profitable business. Personally, I would hold the money back and allow it to be used for things like a wedding or a house deposit once he is married, education or trade school, etc. A business venture would be a challenge, and I would treat it more like a loan. If he cannot get approved for a loan from a bank with his plan, he cannot access the college fund. It seems like your son is acting entitled and does not realize how fortunate he is to have a college fund set aside for him. Many adults are struggling with student debt. He needs to see the bigger picture. It sounds like you are handling this situation well. How amazing that you and your wife had the foresight and means to contribute to a college fund for your son. Great job, Dad. My tween daughter has been wanting bangs for a while now because her friend recently got them and they looked really cute. My daughter has beautiful hair, but it's thin and long. So I consulted with my cousin, who is a hairdresser specializing in kids' haircuts. She advised against cutting bangs for my daughter because of her thin hair. Usually, I let my daughter make her own choices about clothes and hair, but in this case, I put my foot down because I knew it would not turn out well and she would be unhappy. My cousin even used FaceApp to show me what my daughter would look like with bangs, and it did not look good. I know FaceApp is not completely accurate, but it was close enough in this case. The day before yesterday, my daughter asked for some alone time in the bathroom. After a while, I noticed that the kitchen scissors were missing. These are large meat scissors. Then I heard her crying in the bathroom, so I made her open the door. She was hunched over, sobbing with her back to me, and I saw a chunk of hair in the sink. She had watched a TikTok video of people cutting their own hair and tried to cut her own bangs. Unfortunately, the result was not good. Her hair was uneven and too short. To give you an idea, she cut it as short as the first bend on your index finger. I did not know what to say, so I made sure she did not hurt herself with the scissors, which she did not. I looked at her hair and realized I could not fix it myself, so I called my cousin to come over and even out the cut. 
However, it had to be cut even shorter. Now her hair is a mess. My daughter is embarrassed and does not want to go out in public. She keeps begging me to fix it. Even though I have explained to her and my cousin has also explained that it cannot be fixed. So I told her, this is what happens when you do not listen. You made a mistake and you knew it was wrong, so now you have to deal with the consequences and wait for it to grow out. My husband thinks I'm being too harsh and unsympathetic, but our daughter is a tween and she is still learning, learning and doing what kids do. I feel that she knew exactly what she was doing and knew that it was wrong, hence her hiding from me. My husband said that she wouldn't have done it herself if I had just taken her to the salon and had her hair cut. My daughter hates the bangs and says my cousin was right, that it wouldn't look good. So if I had taken her to get it done, then she'd be blaming me. So we're at a stalemate. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. Geez, she's a tween, not 20. I'm with your husband on this. She did it. You needn't tell her you're right and she should have listened to you. Way to give a girl mommy issues. You are the idiot. Yeah, this is all your fault. Your kid should be allowed to make simple decisions for herself at this age, and bangs are an incredibly minor simple decision. Hair grows back. You should apologize to her for being overly controlling and tell her that the next time she wants to do something new with her hair, you won't stand in the way. If you let her get the bangs and she didn't like them, you could console her and help her be patient while they grow back. Instead, you have this ridiculous mess. I can guarantee that most of the OPs here are not parents or have really young children. A tween is old enough to face the consequences of her actions. She snuck into the bathroom. She knew she shouldn't be doing what she did. Not the idiot, hair will grow back. There are lots of stupid things kids do that cannot be fixed. Nope, OP is an idiot for putting her foot down about bangs in the first place. Kids should have agency in their appearance as much as possible. OP should have okayed the bangs from the get-go and given her daughter the chance to do them properly or to speak with a professional and make her own decisions about her hairstyle. Disagree. OP is not the idiot. If everyone, including a professional, is telling her that bangs won't work for her, she should not, at this age, be deciding she knows better. If she does and does it herself, the natural consequences are something she can live with and maybe listen to people who know what they're talking about next time. My 27-year-old husband and I live in a small town, and recently my close friend from childhood, who is also 27, moved here as well. A few days ago, my friend messaged me at 8 p.m. asking if any stores were open. She was looking for a drugstore specifically, but as I said, it's a small town, and everything closes at 6. The city is an hour away, and everything would probably be closed by the time she drove there. After some more prodding, she told me that she was out of period products. So I looked under the sink and saw an unopened box of pads, and I told my friend that she could have it. So I gave her the box of pads and then texted my wife who is staying with her parents for the week. What happened and told her that I'll replace it. The next day, the next thing I know, I received a series of texts from my wife calling me an idiot. She expressed that I should have consulted her first before giving away her pads, and that she would have said no. I also received texts from her sister, who found the situation strange. However, I grew up in a household where my mother always kept the downstairs bathroom stocked with pads for guests to use. To me, they are just household items. I wouldn't mind if she gave away my shampoo, since we use different brands. Additionally, I didn't immediately text my wife because she takes a long time to respond, especially when she's at her parents' house. I am usually the one who ensures that our toiletries, including her pads, are always stocked. I guess my wife had a more conservative upbringing. While I see this as no different than running out of toilet paper or toothpaste, and didn't see the need to consult her first. But now I feel like an idiot for not considering her feelings. I didn't think about how my wife would have felt. I just thought my friend needs pads and I have a box, so why not help her out? Am I the idiot here? Not the idiot. Anyone who thinks this is weird should realize that my wife felt comfortable enough to ask for period products. Periods are nothing to be ashamed of. If I were in her shoes, 
I would be glad that my husband doesn't have any hang-ups about periods. Also, why is no one questioning why her sister texted me? Isn't that strange? Maybe her sister was there and upset so she told me. That would make sense. But for her to text me and tell me I did something wrong is absolutely ridiculous. She has no right to do that. My sisters often vent about their significant others when they're upset and I'm around. But they always work it out together. I don't go and text their husbands about every little thing. Her sister has no right to talk about boundaries when she acts like this. Everyone is in the wrong here. Maybe my wife feels uncomfortable with a woman being so close to her husband that she can ask for help with period products. This 27-year-old woman doesn't know any other women in town and had no other options but to call a married friend for help. My wife blew this out of proportion, and that's the only reason I can think of for her reaction. I'm guessing she's more weirded out by the fact that my close female friend asked me for pads and I delivered them to her at night while my wife was away. I don't think there's anything in our relationship that warrants this kind of reaction. I agree. It's not about the pads. My wife is out of town and my female friend recently moved back. I'm assuming my wife is not used to this dynamic, especially coming from a conservative family. It probably has more to do with them being together while she's away. The pads are probably more about her feeling comfortable in her own private space. This is not her sister or friend, but my childhood friend who recently returned. There may be something else going on here. My son is 19. A few weeks ago he had some of his friends over, which is fine. I went to bed early, and my son and his friends were in the basement when I went to bed. I came down the next morning to check my emails. My laptop was in the same place I left it last night, but the screen was cracked and it looked like a drink was spilled on it. When my son got up, I asked him if he knew who damaged my laptop top. He said he didn't know, and they had been in the basement while I had my laptop in the dining room. I told him there was no way the laptop broke its own screen and spilled a drink on itself. So if it wasn't him, then it was one of his friends. He swore up and down that no one had touched my laptop. I was like, okay, then no friends over until someone fesses up. I don't think he took me seriously because I came home from work a few days later and he had some of his friends over. I apologized to them, but informed them that no one had owned up to breaking my laptop so I wasn't allowing company over in the meantime. My son is very upset and says I'm embarrassing him. I'm of the mind that I don't want people in my house who feel it's okay to break my things and then hide them. I've made it clear I don't expect them to replace it. I just want someone to own up to it and apologize. My sister has told me the punishment is harsh and she agrees I'm embarrassing my son. Am I the idiot? How is that punishment overly harsh? It seems like the natural progression. If a group of people break something at your home, of course you wouldn't want to let them back in. Not the idiot. And what is your sister on? Kelamayo. He's also 19, not a child anymore old enough to take responsibility. Make him pay to replace it. And maybe he'll pressure the guilty person to reimburse him. Or you can use his birthday or Christmas money to fix the damage. In the meantime, your house, your rules. He can move in with his friends if he doesn't like that. Yeah, not sure I agree with making your kid pay for someone else's damage. It also isn't their responsibility to police their friends. Seems like that'll just teach them that other people's actions are their responsibility. They aren't. And taking their birthday money for someone else's actions that's just pure cruelty. If you invited them to your house, it's your responsibility to police them. When my friends came over, I had to tell them if they were breaking any of our house rules. I don't see how that's unfair. The kid here is an adult. It's his job to care for other people's possessions if he's using them. In this case, a house and everything in it. Stand your ground, OP. My fiance 26 and I 21 have been dating for two years. He has honestly been the best boyfriend and support person in my life. In my life, I have honestly lost all my faith in men due to my many bad experiences. However, my fiancé was the one who restored it. He had been married before, but his wife unfortunately passed away due to someone driving under the influence. My fiancé and his family described her as a fantastic woman and a saint. 
Sometimes I feel like I am being compared to her, and even receive comments from my fiancé's family members that I look and sound like her. This makes me uncomfortable because I am not trying to replace her. I have always known that my fiancé kept some of her belongings, including her engagement and wedding ring. I was okay with it, but I never expected him to propose to me with her ring. When he proposed, he organized a family picnic to announce my pregnancy. It was a very fancy picnic and everything was perfect. Both our families were there. However, when he proposed, I saw that the ring he chose was his deceased wife's ring, and I was taken aback. I hesitated before saying yes, and his sisters and mother noticed. Later on, they questioned me about it, as if they were interrogating me. I was honest and told them that I felt uncomfortable being proposed to with his deceased wife's ring because it belonged to her, not me. They explained that my fiancé wanted to choose a meaningful ring, and nothing spoke to him more than his late wife's ring. I responded by saying that I would have been happy with any ring. Any ring, even if it was a simple ring pop candy. But something didn't feel right about being proposed to with his dead wife's ring. They told my fiancé who has been distant ever since. I love him and I don't want this to ruin our relationship. I understand that he is still grieving the loss of his wife, but I feel like he is trying to replace her with me. I cannot be her because I am me. Am I wrong for feeling upset? Not at all. By proposing with his late wife's ring, it seems like he is trying to replace her with you. That ring should be a memory of his late wife, not something he should want to see on anyone else's hand. You are not a replacement for her. If you were not pregnant, I would suggest rethinking this relationship entirely. It seems like she should rethink the relationship, regardless. The creep factor is off the charts with this one, and under no circumstances should a child be caught in the middle of this insanity. The ring is meant to represent your relationship and your commitment, not someone else's. If I were in your shoes, I would have said no and likely lost it. How thoughtless! Has it occurred to you that losing your faith in men at the age of 19 is exactly the scenario that would lead you to choose a horrible partner? Either you have been through extreme trauma as a teenager, or you are still very immature and emotionally stunted. Are you sure you are ready for marriage and children at the age of 21? Are you sure this is the best you can do? Don't you want to be your partner's equal? OP, you deserve more than someone who doesn't treat you with respect, has a job, or hasn't been unfaithful. You deserve to discover who you are as an independent adult, find your footing in the world, and mature into a great partner. Seek therapy, and then meet someone amazing who sees you as their equal. Someone with whom you can communicate openly and build a life that is truly your own, with a partner who truly knows and understands you. It doesn't seem like this guy or his family is the right fit for you. It's not just about the ring, it's about the entire situation. I couldn't agree more. You and your partner are both too young to be dealing with such heavy issues. He may have lost his previous partner at a young age, but that doesn't mean he's ready to move on and start a new relationship. Take the time to work on yourself and your own healing before jumping into a new relationship. Seek counseling and get your own ring, one that symbolizes your own journey and growth.